Apollo Global Management's chief economist, Torsten Slock, joins us this morning. Uh, Torsten, your chart of uh, the MAG-7 turned into the FAB4, just showing the splintering of uh, the basket in recent quarters. Got a lot of attention uh, this week. I wonder what you think that says about the AI environment right now. That's a very important question, Carl, because I think that last year and for quite some time, it was really simple. And the market loves simple stories. It was all about the Magnificent Seven. You don't need to do your homework. Everything will go up because the Magnificent Seven are all fine. Well, now, guess what? Looking at it today, exactly as you're saying, you have, of course, Tesla down. You also have Apple. You also have, of course, some fairly significant developments when it comes to Alphabet. On the other side, you still have NVIDIA up. You have Meta up. It has just become a lot more nuanced. So the bottom line, Carl, to your question really is that there are some very important developments that you just simply cannot escape. You have to do your homework. You have to figure out what of these companies are actually benefiting going forward. And is it just one AI story or is it really actually much more complicated than that? Do you think it, it, it cooperates with the vision that the market is digesting uh, this narrative, processing better information and broadening to other sectors, which, of course, bulls have been waiting for forever? I do think so, and I think it's important that this is spreading to other sectors because now there is more nuance in what sectors, what industries are actually benefiting and what other industries are not. But that's very important because it used to be the case in 2022, it was all about rates and inflation. And now suddenly homework has come back. <laughs> Doing your homework and figuring out what should my stock picking be? What should my credit selection be? That's both in public markets and in private markets. Turns out to be really, really important. So therefore, fundamentals... Yes, we can debate, and as you and I do often, what the discussion is about inflation, the Fed, and unemployment, and so on. But really, at the end of the day, for individual names, you have to look at it from a bottom-up perspective. Who are the winners? Who are the losers? And it just turns out to be a lot more complicated than just simply buying the Magnificent Seven. Commodities, obviously, uh, Torsten, moving to the front of the conversations, given the events in the Middle East. People starting to worry what kind of pressure that can, that's going to put, at least on headline inflation readings. Uh, do you think it's the most important story right now? Well, I think that if you combine that with what we saw last week when we saw ISM prices paid for manufacturing, the fact that manufacturing is beginning to recover and beginning to show some more upward momentum, including on prices paid, it does suggest that maybe goods inflation, which, of course, as you know, went up first a lot and then it came down to more normal. Now, the fear you can have is that maybe it's beginning to reaccelerate exactly because of geopolitical risks and also because of the manufacturing sector coming back. Combining that with both shelter inflation and super core inflation also showing some more signs of life. You do begin to worry about the Fed here that uh, this repricing of rates, I think, is very important because it is telling you that we've been waiting for this slowdown for so long. Why is it everyone is expecting this rate slowdown to come in the next several quarters, in particular with the tailwind of the stock market up $10 trillion since the November FOMC meeting? We have a dramatic tailwind to consumption and to CapEx over the coming quarters that will continue to support inflation to the upside.